since some of us found out that we'd been spied on by Mark Kennedy, who we knew as Mark Stone. And we've just been told this week that this inquiry doesn't even intend to hear about the cases that happened in those years until at least 2023. It's been six years since then Home Secretary Theresa May called this inquiry. Uh, it's been five years since meant to start. It's been two years since it was meant to report. Uh, and yet we're only actually getting underway today, today with the first of the evidence hearings. It hasn't been the government or the state or the police uh, that has got us to where we are today. It's been the activists who've not just exposed the undercover officers but also campaigned for an inquiry. We now know that there have been two undercover policing units that have infiltrated activist groups since 1968 until 2010. We're taking part in this public inquiry, but we're doing so under protest because we haven't had our files, we haven't had the cover names of the officers that spied on us, that infiltrated our organisations. Some of them carried out the most terrible abuse on black justice family campaigns, grieving families. They had intimate sexual relationships with women activists. London Greenpeace was uh, infiltrated by three police over a 10 year period. Helen Steele, co-defendant with me in the McLeibel trial, she was targeted by an undercover policeman who she ended up having a two year relationship with. We believe that the SDS was subordinate to MI5. The Home Office set them up, the SDS, they gave them an office, they funded them. We know that they reported to Prime Ministers and Home Secretaries. So what we're saying is those state bodies are not neutral. The vast majority of the organisations spied on were from the left, trade union, environmental campaigns. These are all groups that were working to try and make the world a better place. And the tactics we used included non-violent direct action. We only know of three far-right organisations spied on. Why were they not doing something about the British National Party in South East London that were responsible for incitement of racism in that area, which we think ultimately led to the murder of Roland Adams, Rohit Dougal and Stephen Lawrence. Instead of doing that, they were spying on people like me. I was trying to get the BNP headquarters closed down, along with the Youth Against Racism in Europe, in the Militant and in the Socialist Party, and yet, we were the ones who were subject to this abuse by the police and by the British state. Just had seven days of opening statements, which were streamed live on the internet. The, internet, the inquiry showed they were perfectly capable of doing that. We've been refused the live streaming that we had for the opening hearings, which means there are hundreds if not thousands of people who we know were spied on who are sitting at home right now and unable to follow these proceedings. It's terribly slow. There's a battle about almost everything. We don't have sockets today, for instance. We're free to report with handheld devices. There's no sockets available. There's no reason why the evidence hearings now, particularly considering we're in the middle of a pandemic, England's in lockdown. Um, I've travelled down from non-lockdown Wales especially to attend something which really could quite easily I could have done from home. There's only 60 places here today for us and for members of the press. Other members of the public, the ones who haven't been given full participant status, have actually been told they're not allowed to come at all. We're here, but we're angry. We want our files, we want the cover names, we want the list of the organisations that were spied on so that everybody who was spied on can come forward and take part in this public inquiry. What do we want? Give us our files. Cover name. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? The cover name. When